We're back and uh, we're still in Indianapolis. We haven't left, by the way. And we're at the uh, Photo PXL studio and classroom. And uh, I'm really looking forward to this segment. I'm sitting here with John Panazzo from Colorbyte Software, makes a product called ImagePrint. And uh, John and I have known each other and I've been using ImagePrint for 20 plus years, I guess. And um, I swear by this product. Uh, it's, it has saved my butt and it does such a good job for me who wants to keep his life simple. When I was young and silly, I learned how to make my own profiles and I would make profiles and it was an exercise and it took a lot of time. And the profile, paper profile is really one of the most crucial elements to getting a print looking good that there is. And somebody had told me that if you use image print, they've got these greatest profiles and no matter what, you can't make a profile better. So one of the, 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 the keystone of everything with image print is the fact that you pretty much get great prints right out of the box first time. It's fast, it's convenient, it's got a spool file where it keeps history. Once you get used to it and get it installed and understand how it works, it offers package printing, page layout, best use of paper layout. This is one badass program, I highly recommend it. It's not inexpensive, but I can tell you that over the years, it has saved me and become one of the best investments I ever could ask for. You upgrade it on a regular basis. You've got some big plans for it in the future. And there's a lot of other things they do. So John, why don't you take it away? Tell a little bit about image print, what it really is, and specifically for uh, the photographer these days. I know you do a lot in graphics and so forth too. Yeah, let's kind of talk about who our customer is and uh, we'll break it up. I don't like to use the word really amateur anymore versus professional because- Enthusiasts. those Well, even those lines are, are blurred. Yeah, I'd like to say are. those who, <clears throat> who own a printer for the joy of printing, right? The printer's not a profit center. And then those who the printer is a profit center and, uh, and they do specific things to sell, you know, the prints that come out sure. on it. So in, the, in those two senses, we have those who buy image print just so, solely on, they want a, a, a better experience for printing, right? And then those who uh, of course want that, but are looking for features, functionality, uh, ways to use their printer as a profit center. So those, you know, that sort of encompasses uh, our user base and in, you know, various aspects from photography to other areas of the graphics world. So it's, it's pretty comprehensive. It is kind of a what you see, what you get layout. Um, yeah, and, and it's, it's always been that way. It's evolved, uh, obviously the interface has evolved over time. We're always actively developing um, image print, and you mentioned before, is it a rip, is it not a rip? Um, in, its, in its basic sense, I would say it's not a rip, it's more like an advanced operating system for your printer, right? Yep. It, uh, it just makes things easier communication between what you're doing from a layout standpoint and what's gonna come out on the printer. But image print also has a PDF interpreter that's free of charge, it comes with the software and allows you to do, you know, uh, imaging from PDF files, um, and uh, and we'll get into that in some later uh, segments and and how how we use that in various industries. Cool. So let me explain a few things about workflow first, so you understand my process and why I go into this. Um, and what I do is I work with Capture One and I work my files, do all the things that I need to do, and eventually I make a TIFF file. It might you know, go into Photoshop and I might create a layer and it's a PSD, but eventually I'll flatten that and make what I call a master TIFF at original 100% pro photo 16 bit size. And I think the pro photo is important because of the color space, which image print handles well and 16 bit because it, it gives you so much to work with as far as that goes. Uh, everybody has a different way of working, but if you're you know, want a, a place and a way to work where one file will work and it scales up and down accordingly and does a very, very good job of that. And John can explain how that's done. Uh, this is the, the method I use. So taking that into consideration, why don't you run through the browser, the so, layout and the whole thing. And I think it's, uh, that gets into the whole thing of, you know, things that you and Jeff talked about <clears throat> with, uh, you know, sampling your images at 360 PPI or 720. Well, with image print, you don't need to do that because we own our path to the printer, right? Our data never passes through the operating system. The operating system doesn't have the opportunity to scale our data before it gets to the printer. 
So that becomes a non-issue with image print. So again, when we look at the ease of use and the things that we kind of do behind the scenes as well as what we do in front of you, it's important to know that uh, you know we're handling those things so the user yep. doesn't have to. It, it works and it's pretty cool. So give us a give yeah. Us a why don't we you know start with the interface and and uh -huh. and again these. These men menus can all be positioned to your liking, but I'm going to start kind of with our standard positioning and I'll work from left to right and explain uh, the interface. There's a floating toolbar here. They cover things like uh, zooming, the, the layout window in and out, rotation of images, left and right, flipping top, bottom, left, right. Uh, the ability to set a um, fit uh, fit to margin if you wanted a specific area around um, be between the, the image and the edge of the paper, uh, center automatically, uh, return to, you know, one-to-one -one sizing, for example, that's the image in its original right. sizing, you know, before it was <clears throat> scaled. Um, and then removing an image from a page, um, clearing the page, and there's multiple ways to do this. You can select an image, hit delete, and it would delete the image if you had multiple images on a page. You know, so we can, uh, again, take any image we want, simply drag it over, um, drop it on the interface, and it loads that image in its native size. And you can have multiple pages? So as, as you bring images in, right, it's going to, it says, okay, that image at its native size didn't fit on that page, so it created a new page. Okay, so it's smart. So it's, it's smart in that sense, but again, <laughs> I can, you know, and I'll do, just do this manually, I'll come in, and size the image and, and just move it over to the other page. Um, now there's a blank page here. I can get rid of that. I'll just clip the page icon and we'll get rid of that extra page. So, you know, it's a, the difference between a static workflow and a dynamic workflow. So a lot of layout applications are what we call static. You don't have that ability to move images between pages. They're not live and active. With image print, it's, it's a dynamic workflow. So I can go from one page to the other, continue to resize, uh, add more images. You know, if I wanted to bring another image in and go, okay, so that's there now too. I'll scale that down, let's say, and bring that here. And I, let's say I wanted to continue to scale this down and just start adding a, a bunch of images onto the page. We'll bring another one in. Um, again, we'll- and You can flip that image, right? So yeah, I could. Make I could absolutely home. rotate yep. that image, but you know, you know, now I have all these images, let's say I have them all over the place and I'm getting ready to print and I want to maximize the use of my page. Um, so we have these icons up here and those are what we call our shuffle icons. And what they're going to do is reshuffle the page automatically um, based on your parameters in our layout settings. Um, right now they're set to give a gutter between images. And, uh, and so it'll, automatically reshuffle those images so that it's uh, saving the maximum amount of paper prop, prop um, automatically. Right. Uh, we have different shuffle uh -huh. modes. Um, some of these shuffles are to uh, create cut paths between images, right? So if I'm using a rotary cutter mm -hmm. and I wanna, I wanna create a vertical or a horizontal path, I can click those shuffles and it'll reshuffle and leave those clear cut paths along. Brilliant. From a layout standpoint, it is all WYSIWYG. We're looking at you know what you see, what you get. The margins of the non-printable area of the printer are, are protected. Um, if we zoom in, we can see the little hatch pattern up here. Sure. It's showing you um, we're in non-borderless mode. It's showing you that the, that area is what the printer needs to grab the paper to move it in and out. So, you know, and again, at any time, you know, we're still live and and able to come in here and I can double click, bring up smart crop and, and say, oh, I want that to actually be a, an eight by 10. Um, and it'll show me what that aspect ratio is compared to the image. And I can set the crop and zoom factor. And then it, you know, it immediately appears that way cool. on the page. Um, so just very easy, very flowing software package. Um, so, Again, we covered here the layout window. Um, this is the what we call our image strip or our image browser. Um, and this is our new browser that was introduced in version 12. Uh, and some of the differences between it and the previous browser is it allows us, of course, to view images in different modes. So we have a straight thumbnail mode. Um, 
We can change the size of the thumbnails. Um, we can change the size of the font to make it easy, more readable. Um, and then of course, we can change how many columns uh, we want, or we can go to what we call a directory view, uh, and that shows it in a, in a listing form. So if you have long image names, uh, you can see the full name um, without it being truncated. You have multiple browser modes too, don't you? Multiple browsers, you can search within the, your directory that you're, you're looking at. Easy to add a browser, so I'll go to view and say add a browser. Um, it pops up down at the bottom here, but then I'm just gonna take it and I'm gonna move it right next to this one. And again, we can set it, you know, the size that we sure. want and we can point it to whatever folder we want to. So we can come in and, and point it where uh, we want it to look. And now we're, it's gonna build those thumbnails and it's and building right from the TIFF files. Right from the TIFF files. Uh, and then it'll cache those thumbnails. So once it builds them the first time, it'll be mm -hmm. as you go you know, back and forth. Um, and so you can have as many of these browser windows open as you want to, pointing to different image locations, which allows you to, to quickly you know, build your page of images without having to close, you know, go to another folder or file open, find the folder. You, know, you can just have them pointing into those locations and pulling images from, from any of those locations all at once. And then moving over to the far right, this is what okay. we call our dashboard. Okay. And the dashboard, I'm gonna collapse everything in the dashboard here. And we can see that there's, there's five headings in this dashboard. Um, the first one's gonna be the printer, and that's the printer we have installed. Right now we're looking at a, a P900. Which is sitting right, next, is sitting to right next to well, us. We have two printers running off this, so right. there's so the I'm other gonna, one. I click on that list and now I can see the 9500. Yep. If I was to click on this, it would actually load the layout window for the 9500. So I can actually be laying out and printing to two printers simultaneously, mm -hmm. depending on how I have So it's for a product production license. kind of environment and so forth like that. Absolutely, yeah. and, and each printer has its own <clears throat> spooling system in image print so that you know where we we're not mixing those jobs together you'll see all the jobs that you've printed to the 9500 all the jobs you printed to the 900 and uh be able to reprint rebuild them and do everything you the want the spooling system is really cool we'll get to that in a minute but yeah. let's let's keep going through this dashboard here because this is right. where all the power lies and, and and again just easier to to turn on borderless if you want it's one click we don't have to go searching for it and um, that just gets rid of the, the right little edges there Right. Well, you're actually printing over the edge of the paper sure. in borderless mode. Right. So it, it's going to show you that entire area. And then you can choose how much over the page you want to print or not. Um, sheet or roll, we're on a sheet because we're pointing to the, the P900 right now. And we paper size. Right. And um, the paper tray, you know, how we have it loaded. Uh, you know, again, all of this stuff is just front and center, which, you know, we want it to be um, easy to find, easy to activate. Well, let's, let's set this to 1319 since we have a 1319 piece of paper in there. So we're going to go down to, you want Super A3B, 1319. 1319. So immediately you can see it that changed. It, it changed that and now reshuffle. Does it fit? It does fit. Wow. So just Same. by hitting reshuffle, you know. That's pretty sweet. Uh, you know, so you, you can put it in any orientation you want. Good. Um, so let's go down to, you know what? everybody's interested in, and that's the paper profiles. How do you get them? How do you load them? Do I have to go to a website? Do I have to, you know, find them and then download them and then copy them into another location? Um, no, you don't. It's, it's all online. It's, it's, if you're connected to the internet, every time you launch image print, it downloads an index file. And in that index file lists every profile that we've made for your printer. Mm -hmm. And as we added new ones, if we added new profiles yesterday and you launched the product today, that list will automatically be updated for you so that when you go to search for a profile and we have some um, some parameters here that that limit what we're looking at based on the ink photo or mat. So we're going to go photo. So we're in photo. We're going to say we're in color mode. And then when we look at the brand, if I drop that down, these are all the brands yep. that you know, we build profile for, and they're all the popular papers that are used. Um, the policy with Image Print Black is if, if you have a paper we don't have a profile for, for the life of the product, we'll build it for free for you and, uh, and then include it into the profile repository. So if I'm looking here, if I go to, to Epson, for example, and then I click under paper, 
it's going to show me all those papers that um, for photo sure. lack that we have done and, and we can click on any of them here. Let's go to probably one that you don't have loaded exhibition fiber. You haven't loaded that one yet. So immediately when I selected it, we can see here it says download, download and apply. apply. So if I click that button, it's going to go out to the internet, to our website repository for the profiles, download it and apply it. When it's on your system, you get a little house symbol right here. And that means that that profile is already on your it's system. In the house. Okay. So if I click on one of these other ones that you've already done, you can see it's there and all I have to do is apply it now. So we have plan team loaded in the printer. Okay, so let's go and we'll reselect that and okay. I'll apply it. Uh, and now we know that's applied because uh -huh. it shows it right here, Epson Legacy Platine Photo. And uh, and so that's how you you fetch profiles from and our system. You can add it to favorites, which means you can call it back up if it's paper you normally yeah, use. You, you can, favorites is one of those things that's gonna disappear and we'll talk a little bit about that mm -hmm. um, later, hopefully. Um, and. And that has a lot to do with some of the new features that are, you know, coming out on these on these printers that are a little more advanced and how we want to tag whether we've used any of those features in making a profile or not. So that the user, when they select a profile, all the features that were used to make that profile automatically get selected. One of the big things when you go to a, a website to download profiles from a paper manufacturer, uh, many times you don't know how they were created. Sometimes if they don't include a PDF okay. or some sort of notes with the profile, you don't even know what media type was used, right? And if you don't print with a proper media type, then of course you're not gonna get sure. the proper um, print conditions out. So, you know, all of that's important and, and that makes our profiles stand out because when we make a profile, we tag that profile with everything that was used to create it. So when a user loads it, those settings automatically load with it. The user doesn't have to go and figure out, well, what media type was used and what features were used that's automatically set for them. Now, before you move on, you got the, the daylight in there. You, right. you have profiles that are designed for different lighting conditions. Correct. Too. So if you're working in, your images are gonna be an exhibit in um, a gallery with certain lighting, you can switch it over right. to tungsten lighting or mixed lighting. And so right, forth. so we have daylight, which is you know more or less a, a right around Five thousand K, and then we have tungsten. Um, we have fluorescent there at the bottom, and then we have two mixed conditions. Mm -hmm. And those mixed conditions take in account all sorts of uh, you know ambient lighting, fluorescent lighting, or whatnot. More like home and office sure. environment lighting, um, so that it's not one straight temperature, but it's 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 uh, takes into account uh, you know various aspects of that, and whether you want that to be cool or warm. And you know the way I sort of divide that up is if you're doing landscapes, um, I would recommend warm tones for landscapes, and if you're doing you know portraiture, then I like the cool mix lighting the best. Cool, that's once again a handy thing to have, right? Because otherwise, if you're making your own, that's that's a whole other go around. Yeah, it? and so uh, so each again each profile we do has those five lighting conditions plus grayscale for our black and white workflow. And uh, so continue to move down that we have our layout settings. And this is sort of how you control the whole layout engine of the software. Um, let's go ahead and clear the page of all images here. Let's say I was gonna lay out, I wanted to lay out a bunch of five by sevens or four by sixes. We'll do four by sixes. Um, we wanna crop and zoom. So they're actually four by sixes, regardless of what the aspect ratio of the image is. We'll auto flow, you know, so if we fill up a page to go to the next page. Yep. So, you know, as I start clicking on images here, they're gonna be brought in as four by sixes. This is so fantastic because it moved so quick when you're really trying to make prints and get things done. Also, one of the, you know, the notes here is that if you're using just one paper, I mean, you set it all the stuff the first time, but right. if you're always using uh, one certain paper, you only thing you got to do is essentially, you know, lay the images right. out and size them because you haven't changed anything since the last time right. around. So yeah. it really becomes a, a, an efficient system. So I could drop an entire folder of images on here. It <clears> would <throat> lay them all out, size them, do everything you want. Um, it would set the, you know, the gutter automatically. Right now you have a quarter of an inch between each 
image, but I can turn that off. Let me go down to zero for both of these. And again, reshuffle and it can reshuffle yep. those. And you can set like a left and a, and right. a right and, and force it in between. Correct, yeah. Fairly easy to get to where you want to go quickly, yep. which you know is, is what a lot of people are asked after when you're dealing with large amounts of images, you want to do a lot of Sure, sure, like if I wanted to make a whole slew of you know, greeting cards or different sure. things along the line, this would just be so handy. Or if you're a wedding and a portrait a photographer and you got a whole bunch, you do packages too, correct? Great, we do photo packages. It's you know part of the software and you can design your own templates yep. and, and do all that. But even if, let's just say I was gonna do um, you know, custom size, one of 13 by 19. So why don't we say, you know, 12 inches by 18. And we'll, we'll, oh, we don't want 1200, we want 12. I do that all the time. Um, we'll say center automatically and crop and zoom, auto flow. And so now as I bring an image in, there you go. It's so if if I wanted them, you know, multiple images, huh. and you can see it'll it'll up rotate to best up and fit running and ready to print. and ready to print. So now yeah. I have you know load a stack of paper in, yep. and it's as simple as that. So it allows you to get from point A to point B extremely fast, and that's without going into a lot of you know we consider these basic features, right? We haven't even got into a lot of the more advanced things that we do. I think we covered, you know, auto sizing, right. center automatically, right. crop and zoom, auto flow. Um, we won't cover some of these features down here. They're, they're more CAD related features. Um, we'll go ahead and collapse some of these. Uh, and then we get into image properties. And this is basically looking at everything about an image, right? So if we take that image here, we can see it's 12 by 18. It's uh, got an embedded profile, it's pro photo RGB, it tells you what it is. We're set to perceptual intent. Here again, we can, we can change these things very easily right from here. Mm -hmm. uh, we can override an assigned profile if for some reason you needed to, right? It was tagged improperly right. or maybe it wasn't tagged at all and you needed to apply one to it. And then we look at things like step and repeat. And these are you know, functions to, to make multiple copies of an image right. um, and do it really fast, for example. Let's go ahead and go back to a single page here um, and we'll go to a layout settings. We'll turn that off. Let's make a like a relatively small size here, like a two by three, something tiny. And we'll bring one image in. So if we look at our step and repeat settings here, let's say I want to step it five and we'll repeat five. So we'll have even numbers here. You can step set, and repeat and can, an image. And you can put spacing in between each one. And can put spacing in between each one. Let's put in, there we oh, go. Look at that. That's so simple. It's pretty cool. Now, what's the transparency side of things there, the next selection there? Again, if you're, if you're layering images on top of images and you want to make one, you know, less opaque, you can do so. And, you know, more artistic effects, even, uh, in the software itself, um, you know, a lot of times you'll get, let's go ahead and turn off sizing here. We'll bring another image in. Okay. I'm gonna right mouse click on this image and let's say we wanted to add a background so we can add a frame really easy. And to you the have image. frames built in. Right. And you have a lot of other little things built in. So let's, um, let's put a frame around it. So, so we changed the color of the frame to black. Uh, it's gonna be basically a 0 0.10 thickness and we'll just say hit OK. And there's there our go. frame around the image. Again, you know, if you're doing signature prints mm -hmm. and things like that, just little little things that make make it real easy cool. to do. That's uh, very efficient. Any other little tricks in here that we need to know about or show? I mean, I mean, it, it goes deep. We you know, we can get into things like um, putting, uh, you know, if we're doing greeting cards and and doing you know things like sports cards to be able to put an image inside a graphic, you know, Image Print will do all of that. Um, well, I'll tell you what. Why don't we do a, a quick multi-image layout? Get okay. rid of this. We have a piece of paper in, and we'll hit the print button, and 
I want to talk to you about how you make your profiles. Okay. And while we're doing that, uh, we'll any get particular image you want? Yeah, just select a bunch and do, you know, like you've got a couple portraits, and that's my wife. You should take her in a fire truck, put her in there. She'll love it. And uh, if you want, just go ahead and hit the print button. And it's great. And in the dashboard up on the top is, is the print button. And we'll go ahead and hit print. And it's going to give us uh, all the basics. So it's going to tell us what our profile is. That way, you know, sometimes we put a sheet of paper in and we, did, we forgot to change the profile. Mm -hmm. This gives you another opportunity to see if it's correct. And if you don't like seeing that window, you could just say, don't show me yeah, that again. Terrible. And I like it as a confirmation because the screen flashes. Right. And that's when I go over to the spooler. Right. And so now we have the spooler open here. And we can see in the active jobs, and these are all the jobs you've right. printed. Uh, and, and it keeps track separately for each printer. So correct. if I switched over to 9500, 9, it would show the, the jobs that were previously printed on that. One of the things we didn't talk about when we were on the previous page is the fact that you have, you have another dialog box which sets up for the cutter. Correct. And um, you also can print barcodes on that for production purposes and so forth too. Yes, correct? the barcodes get printed automatically, but if you're, mm -hmm. uh, you know, let's say you're in a production environment, your cutter's in a different room, not being right next to your working computer, um, there's a, a barcode system that uh, called Data Link that you enable, and it allows you to take your stack of prints that you want to cut, go to the next room where the cutter's at, feed them in, it scans the barcode, automatically goes back to the spooler, gets the correct job, all the cut data from it, and then cuts the job and continues yeah. on with the next and the next and the next. That's so cool. So anyway, let's let's talk about what makes your profiles so different. I mean, you're, you spend a lot of money to do your profiles, and you right. have some sort of, I don't know if it's a magic sauce, because they're certainly really good profiles, and I don't know how you can achieve better profiles and we seem to even be able to get from the manufacturer. Yeah, it's, well, it, you know, it's, it's not necessarily magic, but uh, it is a different flavor, right? Is it a better flavor? It, it may be in some cases. Um, it is what we consider uh, from a purist sense, what we're after is um, true color management. What we want to do is accurately represent what's in the image onto the screen so it allows you to see it. Every image you view in image prints soft proofed automatically. There's no special mode you have to mm -hmm. go into. So you're always looking at the image through the paper profile. Um, so if you, if you see something you don't like, it gives you a chance to make that adjustment. There are some correction tools in image print um, to do that, or you can go back to your editing software and do that. Okay. But the profile itself uh, is built with our own profiling software. So we're not using off the shelf third party profiling software, um, we actually, create that ourselves. Um, and therefore it is created to work hand in hand with image print, right? So when we look at how we print shadow details, how we expand and go through that tonal range, the response that we're looking for uh, is, you know, directly programmed into um, not only image print, but our profile maker as well. And our profiles are what we would call a two-step profile. Um, most profiles that we use uh, from the paper manufacturers or for the OEM is what we would call a one-step profile. It's you printed a target, you measured the target, you built a profile. With image print, we actually build a lookup table first, right? And that lookup table describes the tonality that we want to see on the, mm -hmm. on the paper. Um, and then we apply that lookup table when we print our target. And then we measure that target and then build the profile from that. And that lookup table is actually embedded in our profiles. So inside the profile is the color data for the profile, but it's also the lookup table. So that every time the user loads a profile per specific paper, it's loading that lookup table with it, right? And we support hundreds of papers from all different manufacturers, and that's done for each and every one of them. Yeah, it's got to be so, a full-time job, it's just somebody sitting there profiling. It, all the time. it pretty much is a full-time job, right? So there's, you know, when we look at our other product, Image Print Red, <clears throat> which basically is identical in workflow to Image Print Black, but uses the OEM print driver and uses third-party profiles or custom profiles. It doesn't use our profile library. The real difference in the cost between those two profiles is just the labor involved to create that profile sure. library as well as some other things in Image Print Black. One of the things we, we didn't go over too is the, the black and white uh, segment of this, which I think a lot of people find 
um, pretty important. Can we possibly go back and yeah? And the nice the, thing about image print is while it's printing, the spooler's printing. You can you know you could shut it down. You could shut everything sure. down except your computer and walk away and continue to print. Or you can start laying out images for your next page, and and go at it that way. And we'll go back to the printer profile, and now we're going to look at the gray profile for Legacy Platine. And you haven't downloaded that one yet, so we'll download and apply it. And you can see automatically the image was converted to black oh, and white. Boy. Right now, if you if your images was already grayscale, that's fine too. But if it's color, we'll we'll convert it based on the profile. And then under edit, we'll go to corrections and we'll go to narrow gamut. And this is the black and white interface. This, yeah, this is amazing how many you can tone and stuff like this. So. Right. We're going to just start at the basics here with just one overall zone. And if we look at this right in the middle here is perfect neutral, right? So if we were mm -hmm. to take this image, just go right to print, we would expect that to be on the given paper, a neutral print. But let's talk a little about what narrow gamut is versus, you know, full color profiling. Um, when we profile a narrow gamut, we're actually producing a profiling target, which is all the patches are just right around neutral. So we're taking the full gamut of the printer and we're restricting it to this narrow gamut mm -hmm. right around neutral. That allows us to have lots of steps in each of those patches to really hone in on the black and white tonality throughout the entire tonal range. Right. And that's what narrow gamut is. So it's restricting the gamut that the printer's producing to a much narrower gamut. Still allows us to do some toning, mm -hmm. but it gives us lots of definition in grayscale printing. In here, it allows us to tone. So if I want to tone around these zones, if I want it to be cool, you can see here's yep. the original, here's the cool. If I want it to be warm, you know, we go to Isn't all these toning lovely? segments. Oh, my heavens. And, and then when we get into split toning, we say, well, how many zones do we want to have? We'll add another one, right? And now let's say I want cool shadows and I want warm highlights. Yep. And then I can add another zone. And that's a beautiful looking interface that way too. Right. And again, you and now highlights, shadows and midtone. And now I can control where the split happens. Yep. Right. So I can move this around and control how much of a transition I want between these three settings. Pretty cool. And you can save this as a preset? And you can save these, yep. So, so you can build, what what, we, what most people do is they build a toning library. Yep. So they'll take an image, a standard image like this, and then they'll step through all the different kind of split tones that they, they typically work with, get the settings dialed into what they want, and then save those off, and, and then they can recall them at right. any time. Um, down here, we have DCM. That's dynamic contrast matching. And what that allows us, think of that as an S-curve, mm -hmm. right? So I'm gonna turn it off, it's on by default. And if I turn it off, that's just- Yeah, look at the change. Removes, you, you can off. see it kind of flattens the yep, image yep. a little bit because now we have a, basically a straight line for the tonality of the, of the image. We're not boosting you know, contrast through the, the midtones or whatnot. If I turn on DCM, then my slider becomes active. And what this is basically doing is changing the shape of the curve based on the key of the image. And is it working from the midtones or does it just go? Right, it works, works between basically the quarter tones and the three quarter tones. So as you, as you move okay. one up, it's moving one down and it's so changing the shape really of that S curve. The... Right, so depending on whether you have a high key, low key or For normal sure. key image, you can dial this in on an image by image basis. It's not a one size fits all. Huh. Turns beautiful, doesn't it? I mean, it right. looks lovely. And, and one of the big difference between narrow gamut and let's uh -huh. say advanced black and white, which in some cases is very similar, um, narrow gamut is very specific to each paper we profile, right? So it's, it's not a one size fits all type of thing. And then you got the toning in, engine and, and everything. So we're taking to a, in account with our narrow gamut, um, the properties of each paper we profile, right? So that neutral is neutral regardless of what the paper yeah. and the, the toning is consistent. And this, this is a great feature. Now, another feature you have, which uh, is, is sharpening. So uh, the fact that we, we can make work from master file and apply mm -hmm. sharpening to the image. 
Um, let's go ahead and again go to edit and corrections and we'll go to sharpening. Now again, our sharpening, um, as you and I talked before, is output sharpening. Yep. So the goal here um, is separate than creative sharpening, which you you would do in your editing application sure. where you want to separate different aspects of the image to be sharper than others. Um, this primary goal here is to remove the, the softening that happens in the printing process, right? And that's what we call output sharpening. So what I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to turn it on. Um, one is the max, which is an extremely large yeah, amount so of sharpening. Pretty crispy. Right. And a little goes a long way here. So I'm going to go to 0 0.09, right? And that's just an arbitrary number. It really doesn't mean anything. Uh, we have a radius of three for our kernel. Um, let's go ahead and zoom in. And we'll look at some, some text right here. And you can see from the before and yeah, to the after that it's, yeah. it's, you know, it's just it's, removing it's, yeah. the, the softening, you know, that happens on output. Yep. And, and that's really the goal here. And, and also the importance is uh, this is applied after you've done any sizing in image print so that it's always done to the size of the image you're actually going to be sure. printing, not on the original necessarily. Um, again, real easy to use. You can set this as a default in our, in our preferences. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that way it's applied all the time, or you can choose to turn it on and off on a per image basis. But a little goes a long way. I mean, you know, right. a very long way. And what do you do with radius? What do you normally recommend? I recommend a three. three. I think that's pretty common. You know, okay. you could go as high as a five, but I don't really see any need to go higher than that. Excellent. So what are we missing? Anything that uh, we need to cover? I think I thought of all the things that I use. Image print does a lot, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're just scratching the surface sure. with what we covered today. As I load uh -huh. images in image print, it's automatically assigning cut parameters to them. So wherever I move an image, size an image, those cut parameters change for that image. If I were to take the, the spread and we'll spread that cut parameter, now we can really see it, right? Sure. If I were to print this image, put it into the cutter to cut it, I'm gonna get Margin. this picture with that white border mm -hmm. around it perfectly. If I wanted that to be a rounded corners, I can turn on rounded rectangles and, and I can change the, the change diameter of the, the radius yeah, of, radius. The, yep. of the corner. And again, uh, it's, it's like having a die cutter, a photographic die cutter automatically. Uh, it's, it's very slow. And it's not just for rectangles. You can apply any shape you want to an image, you know, and, and it can go as deep as doing, you know, when we, when we talk about all the different ways to use image print to market your business, market your brand, you know, and now we think of things in shapes and not just rectangles. And this cutter can not only cut prints, but you can also put vector, um, yeah, vector. Uh, drawings. So like if you wanted to make a, you know, cut uh, some kind of heavy, well, not heavy cardboard, but some kind of board stock, you know, that you can fold and trim, you can make your own folios and do all sorts of things. Yeah, like uh, adhesive materials, floor graphics, wall graphics, peel and stick, window, decals, um, bumper stickers, stickers, magnets. It'll this will print and cut on magnets. Yeah, we we printed vinyl and, stickers before, and, and it uh, just cuts just the the vinyl part and leaves the backing, so you can just peel it off. It's pretty amazing right. cutter. So um, it, it really turns a large format printer uh, into a whole nother device to use to market your business, create promotional materials, even packaging. Um, there's videos up on our website that show, you know, the creation and use of packaging and, and print and cut for that and all sorts of stuff. And another segment you and I are going to cover um, uh, screen printing, which we have had yep. to do uh, screen separations, as well as how to print copyrighted images, which is you know, phenomenal feature, yeah, feature that we've added. I think we've covered a lot here, but what I would like our audience to know is that we are going to be holding workshops here in the studio and John and I will be doing workshops uh, featuring image print and, and other things. And mm -hmm. we'll go through, you know, not only how to use image print, but how to get images ready, different uh, uh, paper surfaces, uh, inspecting the print, preparing the files, a, a whole bunch of different things along this line. And you'll walk away from this workshop with a, a lot of prints under your arm, and hopefully you'd want to uh, invest in image print once you see what it's like under working conditions. But we will be covering all of the different varieties mm -hmm. so that 
you get a well-rounded version. And you actually see not only how easy printing can be, but also how versatile it can be and how much further you can take it without really going into a lot of science right. in, in that sense. I mean, it, you know, it's let the software do the work, the printers are doing great work, and you, know, you, you come out with material that you know, can help you in your business and also mm -hmm. you know, shine and so forth. So yeah. it's been really good. John, thanks so much. It's, Thank you, uh, Kevin. You know, always a pleasure to work with Image Print, and I enjoy making a print. This is the print we just made, by the way. So um, looks phenomenal. Yeah, looks like first run material. Yep, on beautiful paper, and uh, that's my wife and fire truck. I gave her a ride in, and it's a church and this nice portrait. So you can see how easily it laid out, just like the the system. So thanks very much. Appreciate it, and uh, we'll come back and do some more. All right, thanks. Beep.